Hey guys, Perry from Into Fly Fishing and welcome to another fly tying tutorial. In the vise today I've got the Ultimate Parachute Atoms. There are a number of variations to the standard parachute atoms including micro fillets for the tail and a CDC hackle below the standard dry fly hackle. This makes the fly durable and look very buggy and trout can't resist them. The tools you need to tie the ultimate parachute atoms is a vise. I use a rotary vise as it makes some of the steps a lot easier. A bobbin holder, a pair of sharp scissors, a bodkin, a hackle plier, a whip finishing tool and a paper clamp to clamp the CDC fibers. The first step is to secure a dry fly hook between the jaws of your vise. Here I've got a Moosh Fly Fishing 8426 in the size 16. Any barbless dry fly hook with a wide gap will work perfectly. For thread, I'm using Griffith's Shear 14.0 in the color cinnamon. Attach the thread about a quarter of the hook shank behind the hook eye and wrap the thread over itself to lock it in place. Then you can trim off the excess. Don't discard this excess yet as we will use it to split the tail later on. Open the thread by spinning the bobbin holder counterclockwise and lay a thread foundation rearwards. Stop before you reach the bend of the hook as we'll tie in the micro fibbits first. For the tail I'm using micro fibbits in the color olive. Break off two fibbits and make sure that their tips align. Once you've got the tips aligned measure the micro fibbits against the length of the hook shank. Here I'm looking at around one and a half to two times the length. Transfer that imaginary tying in point to where you Left the thread and tie in the fibbits with one or two pinch wraps. Lock it in place and advance your thread rearwards to secure the micro fibbits. Stop once you reach the bend of the hook. Now take that piece of thread that you kept aside and wrap it around the bend of the hook behind the micro fibbits that you tied in. Fold it double and use a bodkin to split the two micro fibbits. Once it's split, pull up this folded over thread between them to split them open and secure with your thread on top of the hook shank. Now pull on the micro fibbits just to align them and secure with thread again. Trim off the excess of both the micro fibbits and the thread and clean up the tying thread. It's a good idea to start building the taper now, or at least just to keep it in mind. Leave the thread at the base of the micro for the tail. For the abdomen, I'm using a turkey bite in the color gray. You'll notice that the turkey bite has a translucent side on the one side and almost like a dark edge on the opposite side. So what we're doing is flip the turkey bite over. We'll be tying it in by its tip, but Hold it so that the translucent side is on the hook eye side. Then tie in the turkey bite. Once you've done three wraps, just release the tension on the bobbin and pull on the turkey bite to slide the tip into the thread. Wrap forward with your thread and I just do a half hitch or a small whip finish here just to keep the thread in place. Now what I do is I uh, rest the bobbin with thread over a bobbin holder. Now I place the turkey bite in a hackle plier without breaking it. It can be very delicate so just pay attention there. And then I rotate the vise while I wrap the bite forward. You'll notice that it creates a very nice segmented body. Once you've covered about two thirds of the body, remove the thread from the bobbin rest and secure the bite with your thread. Now cut off the turkey bite, a pair of scissors, and just cover that excess with your thread. Now I lay a front or forward 
part of the thread foundation just to make sure that the thread doesn't hop around or slide off when we tie in the other materials. With the thread positioned almost halfway into the thorax, I tie in the polyon with a couple of thread wraps. Sometimes it might be a little bit tricky, but just keep going. Once you've done a couple of thread wraps, I pull to the sides to secure the polyon perpendicular to the hook shank with figure of eight wraps. Until you're left with that. Now probably one of the hardest steps and most important steps of this fly is to create a solid and dependable post. So really in this process take your time and just follow my steps. So pull on the polyon so that it stands upright. I do that with my tying hand. Then what I do is I wrap the bobbin around the post while keeping tension and transferring it to my two fingers of my tying hand. Just keep wrapping around the base. Very important to cover the base properly to prevent the polyon post from rotating around the shank. Once you get used to it, you'll see that it goes a little bit faster. Every now and then, I just shorten the thread on the bobbin holder. As you go, as the, when the base of the post is secured properly, I advance the thread upwards. I stop with the post length, the same width as the hook cap, and then I wrap the thread down and set it right behind the post that we created. Now the next step is to prepare the hackle. For hackle, I'm using a dry fly whiting hackle um, in grey bronze and in the colour grizzly. First step is to select the suitable sized hackle. Well, this depends greatly on how you'll be fishing the fly and also um, what your personal taste is. I like my ankle a little bit oversized on these flies. It provides ample buoyancy, um, especially when you're using the fly in a dry dropper rig. Now to prepare the ankle, stroke back all the fibers at the base of the feather, all these soft and fluffy fibers, just pluck them off. That's basically what we're aiming for. You'll notice that the ankle has a dull side and a shiny side. This isn't necessarily visible in the video, but as soon as you have a hackle in your hand, you'll notice that. So with the shiny side facing you and the base of the feather pointing in an upward direction, pluck off all the fibers on the feather on the right hand side. That is what we're after. So all the fibers being pulled perpendicular to the stem and the fibers on the one side of the hackle removed. What I'd like to do now is just stroke back all the fibers so that they lie down against the feather stem. Now what we do is with the shiny side of the feather facing you, place the feather with its tip facing in an upward direction against the post. Make sure that the shiny side is facing you and hold the feather in place with the first fibers in line with where you ended the post and secure the feather in place with a couple of thread wraps around the hook shank and one, almost the same as when you created the post, pull the feather up with the poly on and secure the feather all the way up against the post. This will also provide structure. So wrap all the way up again. It's not necessary to have the same amount of wraps. You're just trying to lay the feather in place. Just keep going until you reach the end of the parachute post. Then wrap all the way down again and leave the thread right behind the post. So now you're left with that. Just trim the excess feather stem at the base. So now what we have is 
parachute post and the feather secured right up against it which is very important that the shiny side is facing you and that the first fibers start here right at the end of the parachute post. Now I'm taking some dry fly dubbing and I place it against the thread and I just form a nice slender dubbing noodle. For this dubbing I've got fly right poly dubbing in black. Once you've got the first wrap secured just turn the dubbing to make sure that the dubbing noodle remains slender and wrap around the post to create the thorax. Now leave your thread around the post. That's where we will secure the parachute hackle once we're done wrapping it around the post. Pull down on the hackle just to create a little bend here and start wrapping the hackle around the post. Just going to rotate it to make it a little bit easier to see. Wrap with touching turns in a downward direction. Now with a feather at the base of the post, secure with your thread a couple of times at the base of the post and trim off the excess feather. Now you have that hackle. We've got a couple of fibers here at the top that we'll sort out later. That's what you're looking for. So that hackle will provide ample buoyancy to your, to your fly. Now the next step is where it gets interesting is I'm taking a CDC feather this is a Marc Petitjean feather in the color Beast and I stroke the fibers so that they are perpendicular with the stem. Now I just clamp a couple of these fibers in a paper clamp until I have that. And I take a long pair of scissors and I trim the fibers off the base of the feather or the feather stem. Now we, we have that. Open the thread by spinning it counterclockwise. All that we're going to do is create a little split thread dubbing brush here. And once it's opened, split the thread. I use a pair of scissors and run the th scissors up and down and just split it. Now you've got that. Now place the base of the CDC fibers inside the split thread. Open it and now you've transferred the fibers to the thread. Spin the bobbin to create a nice CDC brush. And just pluck out all the fibers so we create a nice long CDC hackle. Spin it a little bit more. And that's your brush. And now very similar to the hackle, I'm just going to rotate it again. I wrap the CDC brush around the base of the post, being careful not to trap any of the hackle fibers. So once you've made one wrap, palm all the fibers up. Make another wrap, palm all the hackle fibers up, make another wrap until you've basically used up all of your CDC brush. Now transfer the thread to just behind the eye and create a nice neat head with a couple of thread wraps. You're welcome to pull back all the fibers at this stage should be quite strong, shouldn't break, so we can always pull them forward. Now take your whip finishing tool and make a nice three turn whip finish. Pull on it just to secure the knot and trim off the thread. Push down all the aqua fibers and CDC fibers. We don't cut any of them accidentally when we trim the post. Keep pulling the post upwards, take a very sharp pair of scissors and come in at a 45 degree angle. Just rest it right 
against the heckle in that position, leaving a little gap so that you can see the post, especially when you have this bright colored ones. And then at a 45 degree angle, make one quick slip like that. Now rotate the fly and just pluck out any trapped CDC fibers with your bodkin. And any of these fibers that are a little bit too long, I just trim off so that they look realistic. And there you have it, my ultimate parachute atoms. I hope that you found this fly tying tutorial helpful and if you did, please like and subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications. And we can let you know as soon as we release any future tying tutorials. Until we see each other next time, cheers.